You can explore the effects of building shape and orientation as part of a net zero building strategy during the conceptual design phase of a project by comparing conceptual masses with similar volumes and floor areas in Vasari or Revit's conceptual modeling environment. In this simple example, we've created masses with three very different shapes. A low flat shape that's close to the ground, a tall skinny shape that's similar to a tower, and a very compact cubic shape. We can perform a conceptual energy analysis on these shapes to compare their performance and in the results we can look at the energy use intensity, an overall measure of the efficiency that reports the energy use per square foot per year. This is a good measure for comparing design options because it normalizes any differences in the floor area between the options. There are also many other measures available in the analysis reports. For example, we can also look at the predicted energy consumption across a 30-year project life cycle as a total energy expenditure, or by looking at the projected fuel costs or electricity costs independently. Or, we might want to look at the estimated carbon impact for these different options, which is based on the projected energy use, but reduced by the potential for generating renewable energy from photovoltaic and wind sources. When considering different building shapes, the essential trade-off is typically the efficiency of the building surface area to the volume of the space enclosed, so compact cubic shapes are often good performers. But, the simple rule is complicated by the fact that surfaces touching the ground are typically more favorable, since the ground is a good insulator and holds a constant temperature close to our comfort level. So depending on the local climate conditions, low flat buildings with a lot of ground surface often perform very well. Tall skinny buildings tend to lose on both counts. They have a lot of surface area relative to the volume enclosed, and most of that surface area is exposed to the elements. We can also use our simple example model to compare the performance of the same building shape with different orientations. This model contains two versions of the low flat design alternative, one with a longer face oriented north-south, and a second one with a longer face oriented east-west. When we compare the analysis results for those two alternatives, those key performance measures, the energy use intensity, the projected energy cost, and the estimated carbon footprint, all indicate that the south-facing option is the better performer. When finding the best building orientation, the essential trade-off is the positive effects of being able to capture energy along the longest building facades during the times when we need to heat the building, versus the negative effects of capturing unwanted energy along those facades during times when we need to cool it. Since this balance between the amount of time we need to heat a building versus the time we need to cool it varies by local weather conditions, the optimal building orientation varies by project location. It's driven by the building's latitude and its local climate conditions. You can explore the effects of building shape and orientation in more detail by looking at the exercises in Unit 6 of the BIM workshop. This unit illustrates the performance-based design approach and looks at designing a complex of buildings for a college campus in San Diego. In Lesson 1, you'll specify the project location and site characteristics. And then in Lesson 2, you'll explore the effect of creating space in a high-rise tower versus some high-efficiency classroom buildings the design of which is featured as a case study in the sustainability workshop. You can look at three different design options, a 15-story tower, a 13-story tower with two high-efficiency classroom buildings, and a 10-story tower with four high-efficiency buildings. Then, perform a conceptual energy analysis on each of these options and compare the relative performance.
To explore these concepts and the science behind them in even more detail, also take a look at Unit 3 in the BIM curriculum, which focuses on green building design strategies. In Lesson 1, Passive Design, the first exercise explores ways of finding a building's optimal orientation using the weather tool in Autodesk Ecotect Analysis. And the second exercise looks at how to find the optimal building massing and shape using the design alternatives featured in Green Building Studio. Finally, Lesson 5 explores the concepts of daylighting, and the first exercise shows how you can use the data grid tool in Ecotect Analysis to predict the daylighting levels that will be realized within the spaces in your design.